While analyzing the Big Lebowski, I bumped into a very fascinating recurring shape, a motif which looks like this and can be described as two cones with a common base. In the previous video I called this motif the Coen Brothers signature motif for reasons explained in that same video. But from now on I will call this motif the double cone motif, but you could also refer to it as the eye motif, the diamond motif or the rhombus motif. They all refer to the same shape. The shape of this motif could be seen as the form between the rectangle and the circle. When we look at a rectangle from a certain angle, as we see here in Finding Nemo, we see a rhombus or diamond shape. When we tilt a rectangle, as we see here in The Shining, we see a parallelogram, which is an intermediate between a rectangle and a rhombus. It's a matter of how you approach it. What's important for now is to realize that a rectangle and a circle somehow are connected. When we look at Alice's eye here, in Eyes Wide Shut, we see that it has the shape of a parallelogram, which is almost a rectangle. But we all know that the eyelids can be stretched so that they make a circular shape, as we can see here with Wendy's eyes in The Shining. So between the circle and the rectangle lies the double cone, the rhombus, the eye. Therefore, the double cone motif is an intermediate state. Back to the Big Lebowski. Because the Cone Brothers used the double cone motif so many times in the Big Lebowski, it already occurred to me that the double cone motif had to be a very important cinematic motif. The importance of the double cone motif only got bigger when I saw it presented as a huge motif in Finding Nemo. The double cone motif is presented as the motif of the eye. Of course, the eye is a necessary means for watching a film which only stresses the cinematic importance of the double cone motif. At the end of 2001 Space Odyssey, the eye covers the entire screen, which could be interpreted as Kubrick making a huge and direct reference to the double cone motif, the motif of the eye. And to give another short example of the double cone motif in 2001, Dr. Frank Poole here first touches his glasses, which are a reference to vision or the eye, and then he makes a double cone motif with his arms. The same motif the dude makes so many times in the Big Lebowski. But because the double cone motif is such an abstract and such a subtle motif, one has to approach it very carefully. What's important for now is that the double cone motif has a double apex, one on the left and one on the right. These apices are like the eyes medial and lateral cantus, or like the oral commissures at each side of the mouth. Back to the double cone motif. From each apex a cone emerges, like two movie projectors beaming at each other. Both cones create a common base right at the motif's center. Both apices are points of convergence. The area between the apex and the base is spatial. The apex itself is non-spatial. The common base is flat. Now just to show how the double cone motif is used, here's some examples. Here. The double cone motif literally is presented as a motif on Brand's tie. Also, Brand's mouth has a double cone shape. Two apices on either side, and between these apices there is a space called the mouth. Here, behind Danny, we can see the double cone motif again. And also the double cone motif is linked to the eye placed between each of the double cone motifs. Here again we can see a literal double cone motif presented on the wallpaper. Also the dude makes a double cone motif with his arms, as he does so many times in the movie. But I think the biggest example of the double cone motif we can see here in the dream sequence. We see a point of convergence at one side and a point of convergence on the other side. And in between these two points of convergence there is a flat common base. The common or dual nature of the base is showed by the chessboard motif which is of course black and white. Here in this shot we have to draw an invisible double cone motif so that we have two apices on either side of the screen. Now right when the dude says What's the point? Danny moves to the right apex or right point. Then again when Walter says Here's my point. Danny moves out of the right apex. And finally, the left apex is emphasized. Again, the dude says, Walter, what is the point? But the man behind the dude stresses the left apex. What the fuck are you talking about? Here again, 
we see two cones emerging from two holes in a bowling ball. Two holes or two apices. Here are the two holes. Fingers go in and two cones emerge from the two holes or apices. One final interesting example is the hairnet of Jesus Quintana. We obviously can see that the double cone motif is present in the hairnet. Also there appear to be two points of convergence. One is made by the hairnet and is located at the occipital bun or at least in the area of it and the other point of convergence is indicated by the direction of the lanes. What's interesting about the point of convergence made by the hairnet is that the double cone motif gets more narrow if it gets closer to the point of convergence which even could be described as a kind of black hole and then if you go beyond the point of convergence to this area the double cone motif isn't there anymore now the motif becomes kind of a fluid thing in which we can even trace circles so this could indicate that the double cone motif or the rhombus and the parallelogram and the rectangle in some way are the same as the circle, only they are stretched in different ways. So far the anatomy of the double cone motif and the examples of the Big Lebowski. I hope this video makes clear the importance of the double cone motif, what it kind of represents, its connection with the eye and therefore its cinematic importance. Thanks for watching.